TeachAnOldDogNewTricks.com. More than 40 hours of free computer training. Sit, stay, and learn. Thank you. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Hollowitz, and I want to thank you for being here for this tutorial on creating invoices in QuickBooks. What I love about this tutorial is this tutorial will teach you so much about QuickBooks just by the simple act of creating your first invoice. Because what you're going to do in the creation of this invoice, the things you'll learn will carry over into all areas of QuickBooks. So believe it or not, creating a simple invoice is going to take you very far in the process of learning QuickBooks. And really, in my opinion, hopefully take you over that hump of feeling intimidated by QuickBooks, especially if you're new by it or new to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right up here and click on Create Invoices. When this Create Invoices box opens up, we're going to have a blank invoice. Now keep in mind there's many different types of invoices you can use. You can also customize an invoice, but I'm not going to go there for right now. Our goal with this invoice is to create an invoice for our first company that, or I should say customer. And you'll notice that right up here it says customer job and that's where my blinking cursor is when I open the invoice. What I'm asked to do at this point is type in the company that I want to send an invoice to or bill. So I'm going to type in ABC company. Oop, let me retype that. ABC company. Now, one thing here. As we do this, make sure that if you've never invoiced a company before, that you get it exactly the way you want it. So, in fact, the name of this company is ABC Company, comma, space, Inc., with a period. That's their actual name. So I typed it in just like that. At this point, once I've typed that in, I'm going to hit the Tab key on my keyboard to move on to the next field. So when I hit the tab key to move on, a box popped up and it's saying, hey, this customer isn't in QuickBooks. It's not found. We don't have any information about it. And there's two ways that you can add this customer. My feeling, especially from a learning point of view and also just from a usability point of view, is I very rarely go into setup. I just don't do it. I always click on quick add because a lot of the things you're going to do here are going to be more visual and they're things that will update what you would have done here anyway. Here it gives you too many questions in my opinion. For a learning process I just want you to click on quick add. What happens is it took this company and just sort of put it there and it moved over here to this template. Now for the sake of our discussion there are different invoices we can choose from. We can do a product invoice, a service invoice, we can do a packing slip. For right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose the product invoice. Because what we're doing here is we're going to be talking about selling ice cream. So once I've chosen that invoice, the next invoice I do will automatically use that one because it remembers the last invoice we use. So at this point, with that small exception of what to do, I'm going to hit the tab key and now we're going to go to the date. If I want to change the date of this invoice, I can click on the calendar right there, but I can also use the plus and minus key on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the minus key and you'll see it flips through the days. I hit the minus, if I want to hit plus, I can come back to whatever date I want. So let's say we're doing it for 3-11-2013. I'm going to hit the tab key and let's just assume the invoice is for that day. I'm going to hit the tab key and now it's going to go down to invoice number. Now by default QuickBooks puts in invoice number one but what I usually recommend to companies just starting is I say let's change the invoice number just so it doesn't look like this is the first invoice. So maybe we change it up to invoice number 2001. I'm going to hit the tab key and now it's going over to ABC Company Inc. I'm going to hit the enter key to go down a line and I'm going to type in 123 Main Street. I'm going to hit the tab again. I'm going to type in Boston. Now if you don't know it, I'm in a suburb of Boston. So I'm going to 
reference this area a little bit as we go. And I'm not even sure the zip code, but that's okay. I'm just going to put in anything for now. Now I'm going to hit the tab key, and it says ship to right here. So this is the billing address. Here's the ship to. And what I can do is I can add something new if I need to. So for example, it's going to assume it's going to ship it to this unless I tell it to ship it elsewhere. I'm going to ignore this and I'm going to hit the tab key and go down to PO number. In this case I don't have a PO number so I'm not even going to worry about it but if you have a purchase order number you can put it there. If you never use purchase orders you can customize this invoice to take that out. I'm going to hit the tab key again and I'm going to go over to terms. If I click on the drop down you'll see there's different terms in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the term COD. I'm going to hit the tab key. Now, what happens is every time I add something that's new or unique, it's going to ask me to set it up. But once I set it up the first time, I don't have to worry about it again. I'm going to click on setup in this case, and now it's saying, okay, how do I want to handle this? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. All I'm going to do is simply click on OK. We'll come back to some of these things later, but I don't want to get involved in this. As far as rep, if you have sales representatives, we can put a rep in. I'm going to click on the drop down. I'm going to click on add new, and I'm just going to call it, I'm going to put me in as the rep. I'm going to put this in just like this. I'm going to go down. It tells me I'm not on an employee, a vendor, or client list, or anything of that nature, or other name list. That's okay. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to do quick add. Now, with this, do you start seeing a trend here where when we put things in for the first time, I'm being prompted to set it up? The goal here is once you start recognizing the act of working in QuickBooks will ask you to do things, if you're not sure exactly how to handle it, don't try to be perfect at this point. We can adjust things after. The goal is to make this user friendly and make you use it. So my advice to you as a new QuickBooks user is in most cases just click on quick add because we can always come back. Now, who am I? Am I a vendor? Am I an employee or other? Maybe I'm a representative or a manufacturer's rep, whatever. Let's just say I'm an employee and I'm gonna click OK. Now, it put my initials in here and I'm just simply going to click OK. So it put my initials in so it tracks the sales per rep. I'm going to hit the tab key. If I have a different ship date, I can change it here. If I want to ship it a certain way, I can say I'm going to ship it this way or maybe it's internal. Depends on how you want to set it up. But again, we have a lot of choices here. This item I'm just going to go by right now and come down to quantity. Let's say that the quantity is 10. Next, we're going to go to the item code. At this point, I'm going to end this tutorial and the next time we're going to start looking at setting up items because what we want to do for this person is we're going to sell them some vanilla ice cream. And in our next tutorial, we'll start looking at the item, name or code, and the description. And you'll see how this starts to pan out and how it starts to work. My name is Tony Holowitz, and I want to thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day.